okay so good morning uh, all of you uh, yeah so in the last class we were <coughs> looking at uh, the derivation of continuity and the momentum equations and we started off with uh, the derivation of the energy equation in a cartesian coordinate framework and uh, today we will continue and complete this uh, derivation so as we had seen we have taken a uh, a cubic or a uh, you know uh, a cartesian uh, coordinate control volume and uh, the contributions to energy if you look at so you have uh, primarily the uh, the efflux of uh, internal energy as well as the kinetic energy which is crossing the control volume boundaries in all the three directions i'm just representing here on only two directions you can also extrapolate that to the third direction apart from that you have the uh, efflux of uh, heat by conduction okay so that is this uh, q double prime so you have uh, heat conduction which is essentially transferring the heat by diffusion process and uh, you have energy transfer by means of uh, efflux of uh, the internal and the kinetic energies and also you have work transfer so all the three are simultaneously these are uh, uh, these are efflexes or fluxes of uh, contributions of internal kinetic energies the work and uh, the heat which is all acting on the control volume boundaries and as far as uh, uh, the uh, change within the uh, control volume is concerned so we know that we can express the change rate of change of energy in the control volume to the net efflux of energy across the control volume boundaries okay and now we are also looking at when we are looking at the work we include the body force terms which are acting on the entire volume into the work terms okay so they are the potential energy terms which we are adding as work so if you look at the rate of change of energy essentially uh, so this is the uh, energy per unit mass okay internal energy per unit mass is this u capital u or small u which you want to use if i use small u that conflicts with my velocity therefore i'm using capital u and uh, this is your kinetic energy per unit mass so multiplied by the mass which is your density times the volume so this gives me the the energy of the uh, system and therefore the rate of uh, change of energy will be d of this divided by dt okay so therefore if you look at uh, on the right hand side which is the net efflux of energy we have to uh, balance the energy which is uh, coming in from the uh, left boundary minus the one which is leaving and similarly in the y direction and the z directions and uh, if you can do that and expand by taylor series uh, if you calculate the energy rate of change of uh, rate of energy in minus rate of energy out so you end up with these uh, three terms which which we have written down last time so similarly we can also express the flux of uh, heat as well as the work you know the flux of work is a little bit more uh, complicated which will lead lead to uh, additional terms which are coming in uh, but we can also try to expand and see how how those terms uh, look so let us uh, write down the net flux of heat okay so do you think that this is correct reflex of kinetic and something is missing here sign minus there should be a minus here right so that is uh, your uh, flux of uh, kinetic and potential energies coming in minus the one that is leaving so this should be a minus sign here right and when we write the net flux of heat okay so let us write it down can you say probably how it should look minus of dq x dx plus dq double prime dy plus dq z double prime by dz so these are your fluxes into the volume finally so anyway you have for each of these derivatives you have delta x and multiplied by the area so everything comes out as a volume you have delta x delta y delta z okay so we can uh, now introduce the uh, fourier's law of heat conduction okay so you know that your q vector is equal to minus k delta t right so that can be introduced and uh, 
can you say how this can be written so we can the minus minus sign can be cancelled off uh, you can write this as d by dx strictly speaking the thermal conductivity could be anisotropic that means you can have different different thermal conductivities in the different directions so you can keep it within the partial derivative if you assume that is isotropic and constant property so this can be taken outside the partial derivative okay so I am assuming here that thermal conductivity is isotropic but could be a function of position okay because of its dependence on temperature so I can express this okay so so much so for the net efflux of heat so it is uh, looking very straightforward now let us move on to the net efflux of work now this is uh, a very a lengthy expression because you have to consider all the terms which contribute to work okay so if you do the same analogy and apply that to work so how does uh, the work terms appear can you think about uh, so you are writing the net efflux of uh, uh, internal and kinetic energy is heat and in analogous way so what are all the terms which contribute to work the forces okay all the forces the surface forces the volumetric forces they are all included under the work term okay so if you go back and revisit your momentum equation so you look at what are all the surface forces and body forces acting and then you multiply them with the respective velocities okay so that will give you the amount of work okay so that is basically the rate of work right the force into displacement divided by time so that is the rate of work so all these are in rate terms all right so if you do that so the net efflux of work in all the three directions so I am just going to write down and uh, you just please verify if they are correct and also the sign convention is that so I am assuming the forces which are all acting the net forces acting in the positive direction are all positive work okay they contribute to the, the positive along a positive x direction so this should uh, be looking like this d by dx uh, from the x momentum equation you have d sigma x x x by dx so I am just multiplying by the corresponding uh, velocities in that particular direction so u sigma x x right you can verify that from your momentum equation expression okay u tau y x so these are the stresses the normal stresses normal viscous stress, stresses and the tangential stresses which are acting along the x direction multiplied by the corresponding velocity in that direction all right so this is the contribution this is the net contribution to the efflux of work so we have w into tau z x okay so this is in the x direction okay so this should be u here right here so you have to sum them in all the directions okay so you can say plus you can just uh, write that in the y direction as well you have v can you tell me what this term should be sigma yy plus d by dx into v into tau is it yx xy okay so so you look at this the the last subscript here denotes to the direction that we are talking about in which you are we are calculating the work or momentum okay plus your d by dz of v into tau z z y okay so this is a good exercise for you plus you have uh, d by dz of w into sigma z z plus d by dx of w into sigma what should be, what should be this term tau xz 
plus d by dy of w tau hmm, yz. Okay, so these are the contributions to the surface forces. So what 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 should be added to this? What are the other contributions to work? Body forces. Okay, so that also we can. Yeah, so that is coming under the body forces. Okay, so that is the potential uh, energy contribution that is added under the work. So this will be rho u. So I am taking rho common because rho is common in all the three directions. You have u g x v g y plus w v g z. Okay, now this entire e expression right here, uh, I have to multiply by the volume and same with respect to this because this is a volumetric force you can see directly this is multiplied by the volume the other ones you know from the Taylor series expansion we have this delta x delta y so any questions on this I hope uh, you have identified the different contributions to the, the flux terms as well as uh, you know rate of change of energy within the control volume is straightforward. So now we will just balance that using the principle of conservation of energy and we will write down so this will lead to a big expression here uh, which can be written as d by dt okay let me number this as uh, let me call this as number 1 here okay so from 1 so I am going to substitute for all these terms into 1 so this is d by dt of rho capital U plus the kinetic energy so this is the uh, rate of change of energy within the control volume plus uh, you have uh, the terms which are so, so actually strictly speaking what we could have done uh, we can combine the rate of change of energy and the flux terms together into a total derivative. So I am just going to first write it down and then combine the, the convective terms and the uh, rate of change terms into one single total derivative for a compact notation. So right now I will just uh, write it uh, in the full form. So this is d by dx rho u uh, probably I have uh, missed the rho here okay so this should be a row here right okay because this is the flux okay so that should be mass flux multiplied by the area which will give you the flow rate of this particular quantity all right so you can you can write this in terms of rho u uh, so u plus u square plus v square plus w square by 2 okay plus you have d by dy rho v so I have taken all the uh, efflux of kinetic and uh, uh, internal energy is towards the left hand side and combine that with the rate of change of energy so this is my left hand side terms now this should be equal to I am not going to write down it is uh, taking too much of space here I will just mention this is equal to net efflux of heat right so you can just write those terms here net efflux of heat plus what net efflux of work. okay so now on the left hand side term I can I can just uh, say from the LHS so the term right here the time derivative and the spatial derivatives can be combined into one total derivative if you also observe we can also simplify this a little bit 
we can say take u plus uh, u square plus v square plus w square by 2 common so this will be d by dt of rho plus d by dx of rho u plus this plus this so what is that that is a continuity equation okay which will be automatically satisfied so that will go to 0 and therefore you can uh, say that you can take rho out and we can write this as d by d by dt of this plus d by dx of u into this plus d by dy of u into this okay so that can be written as rho into the total derivative of d by dt with respect to u plus right because the continuity is satisfied so I can take the row out okay so I am not making any assumption here I am not making any incompressible assumption but you can see that if you expand this the compressible form of continuity itself is satisfied so I can write this as row into the total derivative of the internal and kinetic energies so the LHS is simplified so now I can equate that to the other terms okay so that will be equal to my d by dx of k dt by dx plus d by dy plus I have the work terms So what I am going to do here I am uh, just clubbing these terms d by dx terms here in the from the x momentum the y momentum and the z momentum together okay so I am taking d by dx common and writing all the terms uh, inside that so that should give me u sigma xx plus v tau xy plus w tau xz please check if these terms are right plus d by dy of uh, u tau yx plus v sigma yy yz zx plus v tau zy sigma zz plus I have the body force terms rho into ugx plus vgy wgz okay so this is my complicated form of the energy equation uh, now what I am more interested finally is the uh, I should write down an equation for the change in internal energy of the system more than the total energy which includes uh, internal energy plus the uh, kinetic energy so I want to somehow eliminate the kinetic energy part and write down an equation governing only the internal energy which is the direct indicator of the temperature change of temperature of that particular system so how can I do that how can I eliminate the mechanical energy component from this can we use the momentum equation somehow and uh, we can construct an equation for mechanical energy from the momentum equation you know the momentum equation is written for u v and w okay we can multiply those with u v and w in each each of these directions we can sum them up together and you will get this particular form on the left hand side that can be subtracted from here and this component can be eliminated straight away right so if you go back and see how your momentum equations are written okay now this is the let me call this as uh, equation number one I uh, already have one so I will call this as number two okay so how are we going to do it if you look at the momentum equations on the left hand side term how do we have the total derivative can you go back and check d by dt of du by dt for example in the x momentum right okay so this is the left hand side term correct so if we multiply this by u okay so this will be u du by dt which can be written as du square by 2 
correct this is nothing but u du by dt so the same thing we are going to do in all the three directions multiply by the respective velocities and sum them up so what you will get plus v square plus w square by 2 so now you see the left hand side term of the energy equation so this and this are common right so if you subtract this directly you will eliminate kinetic energy so you will retain only the uh, internal energy component so now we also have something on the right hand side of course when we subtract we have to subtract both sides on the right hand side terms what you will get can you can you just go back to your momentum equation and multiply and tell me so you have u into d sigma xx by dx plus d tau yx by dy plus d tau zx by dz so this is the x momentum which you are multiplying by u plus what the y momentum v into d tau xy by dx plus d sigma yy so what should be this term third term d tau in which direction it is y direction and the derivative z plus you have d tau x z plus d tau y z plus d sigma z z by d z okay plus if you multiply your body force terms also you have rho into u g x v g y plus okay so this equation is called the mechanical energy equation okay so this is nothing but uh, something like conservation of mechanical energy from the momentum equation okay so if you express write your momentum equation automatically that satisfies this okay but you are explicitly now writing another equation for conservation of mechanical energy so let us call this as uh, number 3 so now if you subtract 3 from 2 that means you are trying to eliminate the kinetic energy term and only retaining the internal energy so so that is going to get us where we want to go in terms of calculating the temperature of a system so so far although you are more familiar with an energy equation involving the temperature we have not introduced strictly speaking an equation for temperature although that appears on the right hand side term here on the left hand side term still you do not have uh, something for the temperature so we are slowly going there okay so subtracting 3 from 2 on the left hand side term you have rho du by dt okay so this is your change of internal rate of change of your internal energy of the system on the right hand side terms you retain your efflux of conduction efflux of heat by conduction so this term comes as it is d by dx and now coming to the other terms if you look at uh, typically this term here and there so you can eliminate uh, so you can expand this as your d by dx uh, sigma xx du by dx plus u into d sigma xx by dx so that cancels so what should what should be the remaining terms after you cancel off you have sigma xx du by dx right plus tau yx into du by dy okay so what I am going to do I am going to uh, combine uh, the like terms together 
So I am going to combine the normal stress terms together first. So you will be getting dV by dy. Okay. So I am looking at this particular term here, here, and writing them together. Plus I have sigma zz dW by dz. Now the other tangential stresses I am combining them. I am also using the fact that tau yx is equal to tau xy. Okay, and tau yz is equal to tau zy and tau xz is equal to tau zx. So if I use that I can combine tau yx and tau xy terms together and that will be dv by dx plus du by dy because if you if you look at uh, tau xy here so this will be dv by dx okay and this will be du by dy okay. So these two term can be combined together and tau x y is equal to tau y x. Similarly the tau y z d w by d y plus d v by d z plus tau x z what should be the derivative inside d u by dz plus dw by dx okay so therefore you have uh, another nice equation which is still not simplified completely but uh, this is an equation for uh, the conservation of the internal energy of that system all right so now what we are going to do so how do we simplify this further How have I written? Okay, so this is coming from the momentum equations. I have, you know, the x, y, z momentum equations, right? So I'm multiplying each of those momentum equations by the respective velocities and summing them together. Okay, so for example, on the x momentum, you have u du by dt. So I can write that as d d by dt of u square by two. Correct. And similarly, in the other direction, I sum them, and also the right-hand side, I'm doing that summation. So this is this is okay. So now, how do we further go ahead and let me write this as equation number four. Still, you have some unknowns on the right-hand side, right? You have terms related to your stresses, which have to be closed. Now how do we close those terms? Stokes hypothesis yes so we have to first derive a we have to use some relationship between the stress and the strain rate so Newton's Newtonian fluid approximation first and uh, of course Stokes hypothesis now also we I'm, I, if you do that you will derive that for a compressible fluid but we are more interested in incompressible fluids in this course so I am directly going to substitute the Newtonian fluid approximation for incompressible fluid now directly okay because otherwise you will accumulate more and more terms. So for incompressible fluid or for incompressible flows so incompressible flows so what I am going to do is uh, can you tell me for example sigma xx should become minus p so this is your pressure force plus Hmm? Okay, after the Stokes approximation, so minus two by three mu into divergence of u. Now for incompressible flows, that is going to be zero, right? So that term can be neglected. So what is the other term? Plus two nu du dx right so that's why i'm going to bring in that approximation that that divergence of u is can can be eliminated straight away so one term is actually simplified so i can write this in the other direction so now my tau xy and tau x is going to be the same for compressible or incompressible fluid okay 
so that is nu into dv by dx plus du by dy so and also you can do that for tau yz is equal to tau zy please you can fill in okay now you can substitute this into 4 and we can write down in terms of velocities okay so what I am going to do just only this term right here which I can probably highlight so this highlighted term alone I am just going to express in terms of velocities so my sigma xx du by dx plus sigma yy dv by dy plus sigma zz dw by dz so if I substitute this so I am going to you can see directly I can take p common du by dx uh, plus dv by dy plus dw by dz so satisfies incompressible continuity okay so if I substitute for this okay so that term I am going to uh, eliminate and you will have 2 nu into du by dx into du by dx plus 2 nu into the same thing so finally you will have 2 nu du by dx the whole square dv by okay so the incompressible approximation is going to simplify this particular the normal stress work okay so to a great manner so therefore if you look at this terms here tau xy you can see that is already new dv by dx plus du by dy so this and this multiplies and this will be again whole square okay so this these are relatively straightforward terms so if I combine that I can once again express equation 4 as rho du by dt should be plus 2 nu and I have this term right here du by dx the whole square okay plus I can take two new common for these terms also I can take one by half factor out so that this is two and two cancels and it is new and what should be the other terms hmm? if you substitute for tau xy into whole square of each of these right so dv by dx plus du by dy the whole square plus half of my dw by dy plus dv by dz the whole square plus half of du by dz plus dw by dx the whole square okay so this is my equation number 5 and now it looks more familiar to you uh, I am going to group this set of terms contributed due to the work as one single term which is denoted by the symbol right here and this is called as the viscous dissipation see all the surface forces you can see the body force terms get cancelled off finally the body force terms do not affect the energy in any way all right so only the viscous forces are playing the role the surface forces and the, they are all grouped together as what is called as a viscous dissipation contribution to the energy internal energy of the system okay now some people make an approximation that under certain criteria and conditions this is going to be negligible and therefore you can see the familiar form of the energy equation okay so we will make a, a few uh, approximations now 
and uh, simplify this equation for couple of uh, conditions so the first thing if you introduce the fact for that your du that is your change of internal energy is related to your temperature okay so if, if you say that it is cv dt and for an incompressible fluid it does not matter which specific heat you use whether it is specific heat capacity at constant pressure or constant volume they are the same okay so for incompressible fluid okay so your uh, du is the same as the change in enthalpy therefore your cv is equal to approximately cp okay so this is just one constant specific heat I can use for incompressible fluids and therefore I can express that in terms of temperature so I can write this as rho C dt by which is equal to C okay so on the right hand side I have this term conduction terms plus I have the viscous dissipation term so this is the familiar form of uh, uh, energy equation for incompressible flows okay now we can also make some more further approximations to this hmm. okay so because uh, this 2 and 2 should cancel off the term is actually new into this mu is common to all of these in fact I should put another big bracket here and yeah you are right yeah so 2 nu is common to all these terms huh? no I am calling this entire thing as phi okay this is a single term which is the viscous dissipation term all right so for steady flows first approximation I am going to reduce this incompressible energy equation for steady flow under constant property assumption that my thermal conductivity is invariant of position with constant or uniform property everywhere so this is going to be uh, so you the time derivative is going to disappear you can write this as u dt by dx plus v dt by dy plus w dt by dz that is equal to k by rho cp which is nothing but the thermal diffusivity okay alpha so i can write my k by rho c rho c as alpha d square t by dx square plus d square t by dy square plus d square t by dz square plus phi by rho c okay so for two dimensional flows I can make further approximation that the third dimension is not important plus phi by rho c where phi becomes even more simplified okay for 2D flows I can expand my so that will be only 2 nu into du by dx the whole square dv by dy plus half of dv by dx plus du by dy the whole square all right so finally when we are working with uh, uh, the energy equation in this course for doing the analytical solutions we will be looking at these approximations okay incompressible flow and mostly in two dimensional we are concerned only with 2D flows for analytical solution so this is the form that we are going to work and you can see the viscous dissipation also gets substantially simplified okay in a coordinate free representation you can also do this 
and you can suppose you neglect your viscous dissipation terms in a coordinate free representation neglecting phi how can you write this okay so suppose you don't make a steady state approximation but still it's an unsteady you can write this as dt by dt plus del dot u vector times the temperature which is equal to alpha del square t so this is my equation for temperature right so this is your advection term this is your diffusion term right here so they are rep represented in terms of your uh, divergence and your Laplacian which you can substitute for the corresponding coordinate system okay so this is a common representation you can if you want to write this in cylindrical or spherical you please substitute in that particular coordinate system the corresponding uh, divergence operator and the Laplacian operator we will we will come back to that okay so right now I am just concerned only with the derivation we will non dimensionalize these equations then we can then only we can find uh, the criteria where we can neglect those terms otherwise when everything is dimensional we cannot find out exactly you know when this is important and when this is not when you non dimensionalize you find in terms of non dimensional numbers okay there is a particular number associated with it that is called the Eckert number if the ratio of Eckert number to the Reynolds number is very high that terms become important viscous dissipation otherwise you can neglect okay so usually for even in the incompressible flows if the flow velocity is high or if you are going to the other limit where you are you are looking at extremely slow flows that is creeping flows under that is called Stokes approximation so under these two categories that term becomes very important for mo most of the intermediate velocities and in intermediate Reynolds numbers so that term can be safely neglected okay so very quickly in the remaining time I am going to introduce to an alternate way of uh, deriving these <coughs> uh, equations so so far what we have done is taken a control volume which is probably in a particular aligned to a particular coordinate system and we have derived it nicely so what if you want to apply this to an arbitrary control volume of any shape and if you want to reach to this particular form which is a coordinate free representation okay so the way to do that is by what is called the Reynolds transport theorem so I will give you some brief introduction into the Reynolds transport theorem now and uh, probably in the next class we can quickly do only the energy equation derivation from the Reynolds transport the momentum equation I think you can try it out yourself so any questions so far on this okay I think some of this is already familiar to you okay so this is through Reynolds transport how many of you are familiar with the Reynolds transport theorem one only one I think whoever has taken the incompressible flows probably this was introduced to you right okay so I mean if you look at the undergraduate level usually we do the derivation in the Cartesian coordinate system that is the easier one to visualize whereas uh, most of the graduate fluid mechanics the governing equations are directly started on a, in a coordinate free control volume so let us take some kind of an arbitrary shape control volume so let us uh, say the volume of this total volume of this at a particular instant of time is V okay and let us say there is a differential volume delta V okay there is a surface normal which is pointing outward and there is a velocity which is also oriented in some particular direction okay so this control volume is actually moving okay and if you take a differential amount of volume you draw the surface normal and you see the velocity is pointing in some direction okay now the surface of this is s is given some value s at this time t now after some time you will find that this volume is changing after a period of time 
So if you go from T to T plus delta T, this volume deforms into some shape like this. Okay. So not only the shape but also the volume is different. So I am going to write this as T plus delta T, the corresponding volume and also your corresponding differential volume also changes. right? So if you overlap these two volumes, so this is the volume at T plus delta T and this is your previous volume say, so this differential volume right here has changed from T to T plus delta T and if I look at only this particular differential volume and I draw the full view representation of that, so it is going to look something like this. Okay, so this is my differential surface delta S, alright, corresponding to this volume. So I am just drawing a 3D representation of this particular segment alone. Okay, now you know that this has a velocity vector like this and this has a normal like this. Okay, so if you align the velocity vector in the direction of the normal, so this distance between these two volumes, that is the displacement from this position to this position, how can you calculate? That gives you the amount that it has actually displaced from this time to T plus delta T, velocity into time. So my velocity in the direction of normal will be U dot N into delta T, okay. So my total uh, deformation of this delta V is actually going to be u dot n dt into ds okay this is going to be the the total deformation of this differential volume correct okay so this is the basics of this so from here maybe i'll take a couple of minutes two or three minutes and then go few more steps so i can say if i want to define any property alpha Okay, so this is the property per unit volume and now the volume is changing but this is a control mass, so that means the mass is constant but the volume is deforming, so therefore I have to define a property per unit volume, so that this alpha is going to be the same here or here, okay, it is per unit volume property and if I want to see how this property is evolving over time, okay, so I can write that. I can calculate the uh, change of this particular property uh, over the entire volume, I can multiply this by the volume, so that is alpha into dv and integrate this over the entire volume, okay. So this is property per unit volume, so for a differential volume I multiply by that, I integrate it over the entire volume, this will give me the property for that particular control volume, okay. So I want to see how this property is changing with respect to time so i take the total derivative of this okay so this is the rate of change of property over this control volume v all right so this i can express as limit my delta t going to zero i can write this as 1 over delta t into the property at time t plus delta t minus so this is at volume t plus delta t minus the integral of this specific property at t right so this is corresponding to volume t so if i take this difference from the property at t plus delta t for this volume minus the property at t for this volume so this difference divided by delta t is going to give me what is the change of this property okay due to the change in the volume and over time okay so this property therefore is only a function of time okay this is not a function of the volume because it's already a property per unit volume so it is only a function of the time so this is the starting point for the reynolds transport theorem so we will stop here and we will let us call this as equation number 1 so this is basically to express the change in the property with respect to time in terms of uh, 
uh, the final and the initial states okay we will start from here and derive the transport theorem tomorrow.